of Josh Giddy and his success with the recent NBA draft. However, something you might not know is Josh isn't the only one in the family making waves in the basketball world. 19-year-old Callum Capps, Giddy's first cousin, is a name you may have missed in this year's NBA draft pick. However, with the 69th pick and Cleveland Cavaliers bound, Callum Capps is keen to share his rather touching story with the world. Today we sat down with the young Aussie star to find out who is Callum Capps and will he live up to the hype? You know, not many people know this, but uh, I actually left to go get cigarettes when Kale was three years old and um, I never came back. But you know, when I heard that Kale was getting picked up, I uh, booked the first train back to, you know, rekindle the relationship. And I searched up how much a f***ing NBA player made and f me, I was running like Mo Farrah to the train station. It was like one of those f***ing cartoon characters, you know, with the, the dollar signs for their eyes. Yeah, you, you know the one I'm talking about. But mate, I just thought to myself, f***ing cha-ching. It was so good. You know, I was going to bought Cal. Cause I, when I got pregnant with him, I was 13 years of age. But something told me, nah, I can't do it because that is going to be something great one day. I'm telling you now, didn't I love? I need your money and 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 How are you feeling, Callum? You must have been so excited when you heard the big news. Oh uh, yeah, look, I was pretty fun. Surprise, I mean, oh, like, can I swear on here or what, what's, got, what's bloody going on? No, this is 69 minutes. Oh yeah, no, that makes sense, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I was bloody surprised because I only started playing basketball two years ago. Um, my mates from footy, they needed numbers for their domestic team, so I just helped them out by filling in. So we heard that you elected yourself for the draft. Talk us through your thought process behind that. Yeah, so the story behind that was I was playing in a grand final game in my domestic team, the Key Sniffers, and there was this little kid with glasses. He shot this two-handed layup and I f***ing swatted him out and said, not my house bitch. and uh, you know then it just hit me that I possess the exact qualities that they look for in the NBA and it'd just be a big shame to let this talent go to waste so um that night I was pretty fucking cunted and I just thought fuck it I'll apply for the draft. Uh, yeah so this here is my family home uh, this is where I grew up we didn't grow up very rich so you know we had to make do with what we could uh, the family that lives in the house were nice enough to let us live in their shed because um, they kept getting uh, broken into so in exchange for us living in their shed, we would just have to fight off um, the burglars if and when they came. It just kind of looked like they would jump that fence there and I would just be like, get out of here! So why is it you believe the Cavaliers took you? Had you been speaking to them prior? Uh, you know, the, there's many reasons I believe could have been the tipping point for them to pick me up. You know, whether that be that they had a scout uh, at that grand final game or, um, you know, whether they saw me, uh, the video of me knocking out J-Mo at the skate park in 2014, you know, whatever the reason was, I'm glad that they did pick me up because uh, full transparency, I owe my dealer a lot, um, and I mean a lot of money from beyond the valley, so this will be really good to, you know, help me get out of that situation, that's for sure. Yeah, look, mate, I don't know what the NBA is, all right, but as long as the makes enough money back to give me the money he owes me, all right? Either that or I'll burn down his f***ing shit shed. Let's talk about your stats. So you averaged 0.1 rebounds and 2.8 points in your Division 3 domestic men's team, the Key Sniffers. How do you think you'll fare against players such as LeBron James, Matthew Della Vadova, and what do you say to the people who think you aren't nearly good enough and there are far more deserving people? Uh, yeah, first of all, LeBron's a f um, second, I, I think that, you know, stats can be deceiving. I might have low stats, but I do a lot of things, all right, to help my team get the win that aren't listed on the stat sheet. Um, and to all the naysayers, I'd just say that they're f jealous. They can eat my sack because I'm f rich. Yeah, look, I am I'm happy for Cal and stuff. Like, he definitely deserves it. I mean, obviously a little disappointed that I averaged 40 and 10 in the NBL this year and Cleveland were supposed to take me, but, you know, happy for Cal, obviously, you know, he deserves it. So, how would you describe Cal as a person? 
Oh, definitely mean, arrogant, selfish. He's just an all-round really. To be honest, I don't even know why I'm mates with him. Could have been me that got through. So Cal, you mentioned that you help the team win in ways that aren't listed on the stat sheet. What sort of things do you mean? You know, there's a lot of things, um, but you, one thing, for example, is uh, before every game that I play, I'll go up to the opposition's best player and I'll say to him, you know, if you play well, then I'll stab you in the car park after the game. Um, I'll always then show him the knife that's in my bag that I bring, I bring a kitchen knife from home. From uh, It's, you know, one of the kitchen knives. I'll bring that to the game um, just to show him that I'm not not kidding, and it, it, that always seems to work. Hey, boss, what's up? Oh, yeah. um, I'm guarding you today, so don't play better than me. All right, I swear to God, I'll stab you after the game. I swear to God. Like, ask your mates about me. Ask about the cat man. They know that I'm not around. All right. Have a great game. Uh, okay, uh, do you have any final things to say? Anyone you want to thank? Uh, yeah, nobody to thank. Um, I do have one thing to say though to my ex-girlfriend Christy. Uh, f*** you, you f cunt. I bet you regret cheating on me with Maddie now, you stupid uh, Alright, we're I'm done here. This is Cal Come on. and this is 69 Minutes. I'm Thanks rich. for watching. Cal, call the boys, okay, so I'm shutting back. In today's news, we have an update on our old friend Callum Caps. Our field journalists have received word from the Cleveland Cavaliers press release that they have reportedly not seen Callum since his first paycheck went through. He was last photographed at a dingy brothel in northern Indonesia, surrounded by mountains of cocaine and disgusting amounts of prostitutes. ESPN commentator Stephen A. Smith says that the Cavs' decision in picking up Mr. Caps was extremely stupid, made absolutely zero sense, and they got what they deserved. Financially, the ordeal has cost Cleveland $6.9 million and has made them the joke of the basketball world. When you're ready. Yeah, when I'm ready. I'm trying not to. <laughs> Sorry, and do you want to just do it instead? Right? It was your fucking Natalie Portman. We went with you. <laughs> <laughs> we made the right choice. <laughs>